This is video 11 in the class BUIS 2100 Introduction to Information Systems. And this video is entitled Enterprise Systems. I'm Dr. Renault with Shawnee State University, and I'll be taking you through this brief video lecture. One of the enterprise systems you'll be hearing a lot about in, in industry and when you get out with a job, or even if you're in a job right now, is something known as supply chain management or SCM. Basically, what supply chain management is all about is to create an integrated system between suppliers, logistics, transportation, sales, raw material, manufacturing, and everybody. It's all about how do we get products to our customers as efficiently as possible. And we'll be collecting data on products, information, and the finances behind the manufacturing, distribution, and sales of products. You know, this system is going to be keeping track of locations, inventories, productions, transport, um, forecasts, raw materials. You, know, you can just see all of the things that go into managing a supply chain. And hopefully your system will, will, will do that. And then something that, that we are really concerned about, or one of the topics that we're concerned about in today's world of, of being environmentally conscious, is can we create a system or can our supply chain management systems help us to be more environmentally friendly, reducing unneeded transportation, um, reducing our, our environmental costs by uh, reducing the size of our building footprints uh, and, and all of those kinds of things. So, so these are all things that we can do, hopefully, with a good supply chain management software system. This slide kind of is, is really complex, but what this is showing is that it's all about communication and collaboration. Um, for instance, we have raw materials and our suppliers of those raw materials, or our suppliers of finished goods. We have our manufacturing, or maybe not. We have our warehousing, or maybe not. We have our sales and our, our e-commerce, and we have our customers. And so we have information that has to flow all the way back through. If we're going to have a sale on a product, or we know that sales are going to be brisk, on a product in six months. We forecasted, we know it's gonna happen. We know we've got the next, I don't know, magical thing. Um, then we'd better have notified warehousing, manufacturing. We'd better have notified our suppliers so that our suppliers can start getting the raw materials they need to manufacture it so that we have it before we can sell it. So it takes that, kind of communication, and that's what those, those green arrows represent. They all represent the, the data flowing back and forth between all of the different parties. And, and there's also another party I didn't mention, and that is our logistics, our transportation partners. From our internal partners, our internal selves, using our own equipment and our own transportation, to our external partners like trucking companies, package delivery companies, the Postal Service, and lots of others. Um, so at each of these phases, we've got to deal with transportation. In today's world, we're having uh, a lot of problems because of the pandemic that we've had in, in the last couple of years of supply chains getting all messed up because of, of problems getting shipments across the ocean and the uh, logistics of emptying a container ship and getting it on trucks, but there aren't enough trucks and there aren't enough trains. And, and so we've got supply chain bottlenecks and only through communications can we in any way take care of these issues and figure out ways around them or figure alternatives or how we're going to survive. So that's why I've made uh, transportation and logistics its own set of blue arrows to kind of kind of show the importance of it. And then lastly, well, not lastly, but we have our internal forecasting 
of what we believe is going to happen, of what we're hoping is going to happen, of, of, of our marketing, our sales, and all of that kind of stuff that needs to go up and back to manufacturing. It needs to go up and back to our raw materials people and need to go back up through transportation to make sure that we have the transport when we need it, that we have the logistics to move it, that we have the raw materials to make it, that we've made it, that we have it in the warehouses to sell it. Um, and, and, you know, I, I show all of those different combinations of logistics. You know, we might sell something and never handle it. Our supplier ships it directly to our customer. So imagine the sales going up to our suppliers and then coming back down. Our suppliers may ship it to our warehousing or manufacturing or, or the raw materials. And it's, it's just, it's just really crazy, all of the combinations. But, but it's the data flow that makes us money. It's the data flow that keeps our customers happy. And that's what we hope to do with all of this. Now, this is done using EDI, Electronic Data Interchange. It's done using web. It's done with e-markets and marketplaces. It's done with brokers and brokerage companies. It's done with business-to-business -business, um, uh, companies that get in the middle and, 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 and business-to-business uh, -business EDI and, and, and web. It's done through online auctions, it's done through the commodities market, it's done through so many different ways. But, uh, and our computer systems and our information systems have to keep track of and hopefully help us do this to maximize our sales and, and make our customers as happy as possible. There's a model known as the CPFR model. And this diagram came from a website called supplychainsecrets.com, and you can see that up here. Um, and basically, you can think of the customer wrapped in circles of influence, and there's customers, retailers, manufacturers, and, and there could be another layer of raw materials and suppliers on the outside of that. Um, and to make the CPFR model work, we have to actively and plan our strategy on how we're going to communicate. We need to take our demand and supply management and communicate that all the way through the target here. We have to execute our sales and our purchases and our, our logistics and our uh, warehouse moves and all of that. And then we have to analyze it all to make sure that it's really, really working, that it's efficient, that we're making the money we expect to make. And by doing all of those four spheres of work on this, on this round target model, we get better forecasts. We get leaner inventories. And when I mean leaner inventories, there's less stuff sitting around, possibly going bad or just taking up time and money. We have better relationships with our suppliers, our manufacturers, our wholesalers, our raw materials. We have, we're more certain about the future and our ability to to move um, to make to make plays we're uh, less expensive again because we're leaner inventories and we're doing it smarter and there's a whole lot less risk if we're communicating with multiple suppliers and they know what we're doing and we know what they're doing then we can all make plans together and succeed and win together that's what a crm is all about Supply chain management never sits still, okay? There are innovations happening every moment, and some of the innovations I'm going to say are really great innovations, have been around for years, and, and, but, but they're always changing. And you will always see the supply chain is extremely dynamic because things like weather, government, war, uh, uh, just raw materials not being available, uh, all kinds of environmental issues can all change the way your supply chain has to work. This is truly like um, playing a game of, of soccer where you know what your goals are, getting the ball on the other end of the field and keeping the opponent from, from your goal, but um, it's always dynamic and never the same and always changing as, as you're playing this game. Some of the innovations, 3D uh, printing, 
where we build what we need. I need a part. I build it today. Use it today. Um, that's really cool to be able to design and manufacture custom things. Um, drones, the Internet of Things, you know, like our refrigerator telling us, telling our grocery store we need to order milk. So our grocery store tells the suppliers that we're going to need milk long before we ever go to the store to buy it. Um, the uh, RFID, radio frequency ID tags, built into items so that when an item rolls into a warehouse, we know exactly what it is and it goes right to where it belongs. Barcodes and QR codes and, and other kinds of, of machine-readable um, tags on items just make things move so much smoother. What's the future hold? Got me. If I knew I'd invest in it, wouldn't be teaching. But what about self-driving vehicles? What's that going to do to transportation and logistics when a shipping container can come off of a come off of a of a ship in Port of Los Angeles or Port of Baltimore? be put on a sled, and that sled delivers itself where it needs to go. Without a human 24-7, think of the automation uh, that's going to continue to improve and grow. Supply chain management and all of the innovations with robots and, and, and technology is, is just going to be a place that that I won't recognize in, in a decade. And, and this lecture will probably be just as out of tune as it is. Now. No, it's not out of tune, but, but you get the idea. This is so dynamic and the innovations, the hits are just going to keep coming right, come on, keep right on coming. In addition to supply chain, which is the one side of the business, making sure we get the stuff and it's where we can sell it. We also need to deal with the customer side of things. How are we going to manage our customer relationships? And customer relationship management software, or CRM, is all about how do we improve our services to customers? How do we get them the stuff they want when they want it? Well, it's going to take us having a much better collection of data and knowledge of what a customer wants and needs. Now, with a customer, as, as a kid, I would say to my mother, I want this. And she would look at me and say, do you need it? Well, no. Did I need that Frisbee? No. Did I need that candy bar? No. I wanted it. Now, if you're dealing with a customer, though, and a customer says, I want this. If that's your business, if that's what you do, if you're selling those and you don't have them, you're going to lose a customer. Um, so a customer relationship management system will help you to manage your customers. How? By identifying segments within your customers. By giving you a big overview, understanding of your customers, but also helping you slice and dice your customers down to to segments that you can target marketing to and really retain and take care of. And that's what it's all about. Keeping your customer from clicking on your competitor's website. Keeping your customer happy. And it's all through sales and order processing and marketing and customer support. You know, those are kind of the the, the ways, the, those are the big pieces. And each one of those pieces has to have its own processing, automation, knowledge management, personalization. Customers today demand personalization. I don't want to see clothes that don't fit me. Don't even show it to me. If you don't have it in my size, I don't want it to appear. I don't want things that are really trendy. You know I'm not going to buy that crap. I've never bought that crap. Don't show it to me. Don't waste my time. Again, personalization on the marketing side, 
on the sales side, um, order customization of knowing where I ship to, of knowing my preferences, um, customer support automation, of of uh, of of it of it handling returns, of it handling uh, my questions, of having knowledge bases, of having customer service people that have access to the data and the knowledge to be able to solve the solutions. So each of those four spheres of the software of sales orders, marketing, and customer support have to deal with how they process the data, how they automate the systems, how they personalize the systems and the knowledge that comes out of those that are used in other systems. There's a third thing that's kind of bigger than supply chain or customer relationships management. It's known as an ERP system or enterprise resource planning. A lot of people don't know what ERP stands for. They just throw out the letters ERP and just expect you to know. What an ERP is, it is an integrated planning system. It does everything hopefully. It has software, hardware, data, and more importantly, it has a unified database of everything. Inventory, manufacturing, supply chain management, HR, human resources, customer relationships management, purchasing, accounting, accounts payable, accounts receivable, general ledger, payroll, sales, EDI, e-commerce, it has it all. It's a giant monolithic one system that does everything for everybody. There are several of these out there. Oracle makes one. There's one called, um, let's just say there are a whole bunch of them out there. PeopleSoft is one of them. Um, and they can be cloud. You can buy from a cloud vendor or you can, you can purchase the ERP or write your own ERP and, and run them on your own hardware. The problem with, with using a cloud-based ERP is you're kind of locked into the vendor. So be sure that it's, it's a product that you believe will work for you long-term. As we said in the, a previous video, a couple of videos ago, remember, when you entertain and you buy these, these big systems, they're going to be around for years, if not decades. So uh, be sure you know who you're who you're going doing business with when you're building an ERP. This sounds really great, doesn't it? I asked the question just last slide. It sounds great. It is. Why? Because you've got availability. It's all right there in one central huge database. All of your account numbers are correct. All of your financial transactions are, are there. Your, your purchasing goes straight into your ledger, goes into your, your sales, goes straight into your, 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 your ledger. Your, uh, your purchases go straight into accounts payable, go straight into inventory, go straight into all of those things. I mean, it's as soon as you receive an item in the warehouse, it's automatically available for sale in the, in, in the, in the store or the e-commerce or the back orders automatically ship. I mean, it, it's, it's magical what it'll do. It's uniform. Everybody's using one system, one unified platform, often with, with very similar design through the whole thing, so that if a user is trained on how to use the software, they can move into another part of the software and feel comfortable. They don't have to learn a new design or a new look and feel. It's consistent. That's great. It's timely. When you update something over here, it's updated over here automatically. It's accurate, usually. If you put good data in and, and people are doing their jobs and feeding it, it's fed all the way through from the beginning all the way through the financial statements and financial reporting. And it's one great big repository of data, allowing you to create a single warehouse to or to do analytics across that, that data and really get a real solid picture of what's going on in your business. Now, what's wrong with an ERP? 
it's expensive. I mean, it's if you think if you're doing it in modules, you could buy a supply chain module, you could buy a customer relationship module, you could buy a this, you could use QuickBooks over here, you could use that over there. But then all of a sudden you've got all these data that don't connect and you don't have uniformity and you don't quite have timely data. And maybe you have some all kinds of issues with getting knowledge and information around the business. So it's expensive, but is it worth it? Those are questions you have to ask. An ERP is hard to install because it affects everybody. Are you going to come to a day and just all of a sudden go, boop, there we go. We've done the we've done the cliff transition. We've done a hard transition to it for everybody in the business. I think it's hard if you've got an enterprise of of dozens, hundreds, and thousands of employees. Um, training becomes a problem, and the and the reason ERPs are difficult is the old systems and procedures. Often, when you implement an ERP, your business needs to not modify and change to become, to work with the ERP, but there will be certain old systems and procedures that the new ERP are going to make difficult to do. Um, and you need to know that up front by doing the proper analysis and design that we talked about a couple of videos ago. One of the ways to ensure ERP success, one of the, the sure ways to to, to guarantee ERP success, and to be able to do it in a, in a more cost-effective basis is to phase it in in modules. For instance, maybe you'll phase the inventory module in first, or maybe you're going to phase the human resources um, payroll function first, and then from that, maybe you'll phase in the accounts receivable function then the accounts payable function. And as you start building these functions into the ERP, then it becomes easier to do the next module. So, you know, maybe doing it as a, as a waterfall cliff transition, boom, there you go, isn't going to work. But to phase the ERP in over a period of months or sometimes even years to transition might make a whole lot of sense. This concludes video 11 on enterprise systems. I'd like to say thank you for watching, as, as you've suffered through many of these probably. I'm Jim Renault at Shawnee State University, and you can contact me at jreno at shawnee.edu if you have any questions. Like, subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Remember, this presentation was copyright 2020. James M. Renault, PhD. All rights are reserved under copyright. Thanks for watching.